Time is 4.30 and we will call the Board of Commissioners meeting for scheduled PUD to order for July 9th, 2024 and ask that you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so this time I would ask for approval of the consent agenda items one through four. So moved. Second. Motion and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. This time we would ask for audience comments. Back to Zoom here. Uh, seeing nobody from the public or in the room from the public, we'll check Zoom. And it looks pretty quiet over there. So we will move on to the general manager's report. Here we are. And Kevin. Yeah. All right. I got a few items for you tonight. Um, we had noticed it's hot outside. All right. So we had a heat advisory went into effect last Friday, July 5th, and to 10 o'clock tonight. So as a result of the extreme heat shutoff moratorium law that went into place last year, we are not disconnecting the water services to any customers for non payment this week. So we'll try to catch up with those if the weather cools off next week. I sent out an email, I hope you saw it, but um, former PD Commissioner Jim Cook passed away on June 28th after a brief battle with pancreatic cancer. Um, he was 68. He served in um, Commissioner Hamburg's district from 20, 2005 to 2016. There was a memorial service last Sunday in London, so it's gone. Um, then we have um, staff have begun testing the new Connect employees module for our time entry system. And the Connect replaces the older employee self-service ESS module. We've been doing training and double entry for about two weeks and we plan to go live with Connect on July 29th. Kudos to our IT department and to Krista Lewis for helping roll that out. So it's coming along. And then New building, we formed a moving committee, and that's headed up by Alistair um, to begin preparing for the move in earnest over to the new building that's coming sooner rather than later. Um, there are a lot of moving parts, what to bring, what to dispose of, records retention, rules, and for planning purposes, working with a soft date about mid-October um, when we think we might get the keys, and then it becomes a phased-in process of, of everybody getting moved over there, and then we expect that'll take place moving into the next end of the new year so it's going to take several months to do that so it's a big big move and um you know it's been several months and a lot has changed since you last visited the building so i want to toss it out to the board if you guys are interested in a tour in advance of next meeting on july 23rd if you guys are available i'm just going to bring it up in commissioner comments but i am going to be out of town okay on the 23rd so okay is that the meeting that we have with the port commission? I thought that was an Oh, is that the one? I was just thinking because that seemed like that was an early one, and then we did yeah, we just scoot over there between because we did build. They haven't confirmed. Some... They haven't confirmed. Oh, they have. Oh, they haven't. Yeah. yeah. So maybe if we do then if they're able to do the next one, Joe, because you probably don't want to be gone for no that. Well, I won't be here the, the first. My son's getting married the first week in August. Or yeah. The. The week of the 13th you're gone? Yeah. Okay. Well, you can think about it. Okay. But hey, yeah, with the eight. Yeah, it'd be nice because we're getting, a lot of this has been done over there. You mentioned with no, I, painting. I and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I might set something up with you next week or something and I could go look at it too. Okay. Thank you guys. The court meeting is for August 13th. Oh, yeah, I was thinking that was August. Okay, okay. good, even better. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> so am I hearing that maybe the 23rd would work and then but you're going to be gone I will be gone for the 23rd okay but we can set something up but yeah. the other two would you like to um, pre-meeting would be good yeah like at 3 o'clock or something yeah okay Great. perfect perfect and that's what I have for the manager awesome very good 
Um, so at this time, looks like you're up again, Kevin. And I'm I'm good 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 again. Yes. All righty. Here we go. Well, it seems like ages since I last gave a community. <laughs> it has. I think it may have been last September or something. And yet we see your word product all the time. Right? It's, it's yeah. very stealth of you. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little bit of what we did this spring and then some of the hit on some of the plans for our summer. Okay, that works. So let's see. I'll start with our outreach efforts, beginning with schools. So in mid-April, we attended the Mount Vernon School Science and Technology Night, which is a popular event that draws a couple thousand people. And this photo is before the chaos started and our booth was still tidy. And then our booth is always really popular. We have the spin wheel and giveaway items. We have the five minute shower timers. We have soil moisture meters, toilet leak detection tablets and water bottles that we hand out. And then um, school group tours picked up this spring um, post COVID. We toured fourth, four fourth grade classes from Madison Elementary School. And then we hosted um, middle school leaders from the Mount Vernon Boys and Girls Club. And then for community events, we were at the Thirst Buster was at the Sketch of Valley Tulip Run in early May. And the runners really appreciated the water before and after the race. I received lots of remarks about the Thirst Buster was the coolest thing that they've ever seen. So it gets lots of kudos there. And then AWWA Drinking Water Week was in early May too. Um, began, it was again a popular sign up event. Within an hour, registration online filled up. Um, with all tour spots were filled. We hosted 45 community members on three timed tours at the reservoir. People were engaged and interested and they asked great questions about where the water comes from. And one person from the Skagit Conservation District liked the tour so much that they booked a Saturday morning tour with us in September for their watershed master's program. That's a good program. Yeah. And then um, we ran a tour on June 28th with the AWWA Northwest Washington subsection, the Young Professionals Group, Mark Semerow, he helped um, organize that one. We had 28 um, water industry professionals from the area. They visited the plant. People were very impressed with our operations, several treatment plant operators from other municipalities um, took the tour and saw our facility. So kind of a recruiting tool. <laughs> Who's going to say that? Yeah. And, um, the Thirst Buster will be back on the road next week in concrete for Youth Activity Day. And then in early August, we'll spend four days at the Sketchy County Fair. And then come September, we'll be at the um, Brian Water Riders for the MS Bike Ride, and then the following week for the Swinomish Emergency Preparedness Fair. They actually, the Swinomish saw our trailer at the bike ride last year, and they're like, we want that at our event. So they're like, okay. So it's going to be on the road. And then our rain barrel program continued to be popular. We sold about 50 barrels so far this year, this spring. We donated a rain barrel to the Mount Vernon Garden and Art Fair that was held the uh, about two weeks ago at the Edgewater Park. And an artist painted one of the barrels and we, they raffled it off. And according to the organizers, and I quote, everyone was quite excited about them and they were a sought after prize. So you can get yourself a dragonfly rain barrel. We received an in-kind sponsorship for the event, which um, helps raise funds to sustain the Emma Jarvis Memorial Garden in downtown Mount Vernon, right next to the reader board on Kincaid down there. There's a little garden, so that helps provide funds. That's right. So. Next, we have our, some of our press clippings that we've received. Um, we've gained positive news coverage that amplifies our core values of quality, environmental stewardship, and financial prudence. Um, for example, we had a front page article about recognizing us for the winning the competition, best tasting water, um, our efforts in finding equitable solution to seasonal water rights transfer and helping farmers, educating our community about where the water comes from and its value via tours up at the Judy Reservoir, and then showcasing the talent and skill of our water treatment plant employees who are behind the scenes making their water safe to drink. So all pretty good stuff there. Front page coverage. Our own media. Next, we have the media that we manage. We have social media accounts on Facebook, YouTube, Nextdoor, and we promoted Fix the Leak Week for water use efficiency. We have community partnerships and hosting blood drive here. I think there's another one at the end of the month. Um, our ongoing outreach efforts to elected officials, such as George's Mount Vernon City Council updates, those are on YouTube, and highlighting our staff at the water treatment plant for their success at Top Ops. So those are our social media. 
And then our printed pipeline newsletter, it goes out to 22,000 customers. And our e-newsletter sent to 7,500 paperless bill customers. And we provide articles and tips on like detecting and chasing down links around the home, staying hydrated, and tips on how much water person should drink, information about water quality, and the annual consumer confidence report, and tips for using water wisely in the yard this summer were just some of the few. So we repurpose that content and use it for all our communication channels. And then our consumer confidence report and water use efficiency update were published June 30th and are available online and in print. The CCR informs our customers on how our water quality stacks up against federal and state drinking water standards. Um, the CCR also includes the water use efficiency goals and the steps we've taken to meet those goals over the last six years. So we're all available. And then we've got a little bit about our website. Last but not least, um, we've had it for a year. I guess it's no longer new, but we continue to refine it. Um, many of the feature articles that we find in the pipeline newsletter are also become stories on our website and can be highlighted on our homepage. Um, we've taken many of our existing customer service paper forms that we've been, we have, and we've developed online forms and these enable us to be more efficient and provide high quality level of customer service. So in the last couple of weeks, we've launched several new forms, including the customer application form for establishing water service here at the PUD. So that's kind of where we're at. We're continuing to grow those forms. So, and we've gotten a few people to fill them out. And that is a quick five minute blitz through community relations. Do you have any questions? No. All right. Very good. Yeah, we'll be busy. Yeah. yeah. All right. So next work next up is a revision to the small works procurement policies and procedures. And it looks like Mark is going to join us. So uh Bill Truman did a really good job putting this together. I think it lays it out pretty well. Uh, basically what's happening is there's some new purchasing uh, rules that have come into play uh, through the RCWs that affect both uh, public works contracting and uh, public works small roster process. Our existing small roster, small works uh, roster process is fairly simple right now. And the way we administer it is in two policies, is in one policy and one administrative procedure that um, kind of go hand in hand. Um, what we currently do, or before July uh, 1st, we were able to solicit anywhere from one to five people from our small works roster for certain projects that were under $350,000. If it was under 150, we could use three quotes. And I think under 50,000, it was um, uh, one one uh, person off the small works roster. That rule has changed uh, in the state law so that now um, it needs to go out to everybody on your small works roster for that particular discipline. And um, you need to have the, the applicants have to be certified through the uh, Office of Women and Minority Businesses for uh, being certified as a minority business. Um, and we have to keep stats on that. Um, so our option is now to either send it out to all the people on the small works for, for a particular discipline, or we can direct contract with a certified um, minority or small business enterprise. Um, <clears throat> there's still some rulemaking that's coming out on these changes, how we administer it, what we take care of, what we tr uh, track, um, what... Um, what kind of demographics they're looking for. From our standpoint, we think the best case or best scenario now is to just suspend our small works roster process in lieu of a public competitive advertised bid process. So instead of going to the small works, what we're gonna do is just advertise all projects, all public works projects and not use the small works roster. That way we get a competitive bid it's somewhat local. Uh, it's very, very public, and everybody gets a fair, fair shot at it. So that is our proposal, basically, in a nutshell, to suspend our small works 
uh, process until we're able to understand what the direction is from MRSC and the state on how these things are going to be applied. Do you see at all the MRSC potentially hosting a small works for you separately so that you don't we don't have to do the vetting? Yeah, so we we have talked about that and um, initially they have both a consultant roster and a small works roster. We don't want both of those. Um, <laughs> And so initially they were saying you have to have both of them. You know, you know, if you want one, you have to have the other. Um, we're working through that. It seems like they've loosened up a little bit. We're not sure though, if we want, I think that's a decision we need to make, you need to make as a policy as well. Um, one of the nice things about the our having our own small works roster is it's kind of small and it's contained to the local businesses here. MRSC is going to have everybody in the state is going to be on that small works roster. And so when we need to uh, solicit to everybody within one discipline, you might as well, you know, post it in the, you know, it, it's basically a, a very much a, a larger volume uh, of people who will be looking at the project. And if we're trying to focus, having a little bit of a local focus, um, that's something we might want to consider. Um, what's the timeline you think that you'll receive more guidance? Yeah, we're, we're thinking October. Yeah, this fall is likely when we would try to get, hopefully we'll know more. Well, what are other we, jurisdictions doing about this? You know, we're not really sure. There have been a number of uh, uh, kind of uh, informational seminars that uh, Catherine Price went to one, Bill Truman went to one. Um, that have kind of highlighted what the what the changes are. We don't we don't really have much information on what other people are doing. I think the I guess I'm I'm kind of speculating here, but I think that in the with the ambiguity around it, I think going to MRSC is a, it's a safe move, right? You just say we're going to use the MRSC roster then they take care of basically all of your reporting requirements. They take care of your certification, the, you know, checking the business certifications. They take care of uh, tracking the data on how many, which entities you use throughout the year. They take care of the advertising, you know, publications uh, for getting people signed up. So the administrative part of it is kind of handled. It's, it's a very easy way to go. It's just, you you get every you get the whole thing that that's why we're trying to we want to be a little cautious so we're trying to maintain and getting competitive bids and which we will uh and we just want to suspend this so that we're not in violation of the small works roster rules were there any other procurement changes that happened in july i know that for the cities we there was a lot of caps that were lifted in the first time in 30 years as far as for, for goods, not necessarily services, but. Yeah, I guess I, I wasn't paying much attention to the goods. I was looking at the other uh, public works contracts, though, yeah. and they are applying the state standard for um, uh, apprentice utilization to all contracts over $2 million okay. for 2024 and 2025. They're going to back that down to uh, $1.5 million. And then I think the threshold falls to a million. So they're really encouraging the use of um, apprenticeship labor in, in the public works process. So if there's no further questions, we'd be looking for a motion to suspend portions of policy 1031 and also uh, administrative Practices and Procedure Policy 2049. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Those are suspended. Thank you, Mark. And looks like Mike is up next with a um, recommendation for removal of some capital assets. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Just have some equipment and assets that are some stuff decades old that we've replaced with equipment that showed up this year or the past year. 
And there's some uh, pickups and things we hung on to for a couple of years during COVID because there's a lot of people having to drive separate and all that. But now that a lot of those things have passed and some of the new equipment has shown up that there's things we can uh, we can let go and gain some money back and put some money back in the coffer for buying stuff that is more useful. And make up three up some more space in the yard to running out of space for we can always park so many things out there. So yeah, just a motion to remove some assets and get some money back in the coffers and get newer stuff, better stuff, and more useful stuff. All right. Is there a motion? I move to recommend the removal of capital assets from capital asset ledger that are listed in the memorandum. Second. Motion a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you. And we'll okay. auction them off. Uh, next up, informational items, monthly budget status report is in there. The Judy Reservoir report is in there. Any commissioner comments this evening? Not for me. Nope, and I would just note that I won't be here on the 23rd, so. All right, with that, we will adjourn at 4.51 p.m. Okay.